Welcome to another video. Let's solve this exponential equation mixed with trigonometry. Now, just looking at the question, there's something in your head saying sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. But you look at it and there's just no way you can combine both of them because this is arithmetic. This is a plus sign, it's not multiplication. So, mm, yeah, it is frustrating initially, but as soon as you know what to do, everything becomes easy, right? So, and on this side, we don't have a zero, we have 30. By observation, you could actually break this into something you can then correspond to the other side, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna just apply brute force solve it the way the teacher taught us in the classroom. So let's get into it. The first thing I want you to know is that that trig identity, the Pythagorean trig identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equal to one is relevant to this. You just need to be able to create it. As soon as you create it, the problem is solved. And what I'm gonna do at this point is try to see how to combine this with this. It doesn't look like there is a way. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite cosine as one minus sine squared, and then see what comes out of it. Something good always comes out of it. So let's do this. Let's say we're gonna write this as 81 to sine squared x plus 81 to what we have it will be 1 minus sine squared x you see that and this would be equal to 30. now with the laws of exponents we know this is a division we can write this as 81 to the first power divided by 81 to sine squared x will be equal to 30 and this is 81 to sine squared x. There's a plus sign here. So you ask me, how is this good? I know how it is good. Because what I have right now is only in terms of sine x. There's no more cosine. So what happens? If I want to get rid of this fraction, I can multiply each term with 81 or by 81 sine squared x. So if I multiply this by 81 sine squared x, multiply this by a to one sine squared x, the same thing here. This is what happens. Ultimately, this becomes a to one sine squared x squared, because I'm gonna use this to multiply it. Plus, if I multiply this by itself, I'm gonna just have a to one to the first power, which is just a to one. And on the right hand side, I'll be multiplying by a to one sine squared x, which is gonna be 30 times 81 raised to power sine squared x. What do you see? I see 81 sine squared x squared here. I see it here. What if I try to save myself and represent this as t? Represent this as t. Look at what happens. I have a simple equation here, t squared. So this is my t now, plus 81 is equal to 30t. Life is beautiful, don't you think so too? Watch that. You see that what looks very complicated a while ago has become so simple. Can you solve this quadratic equation? Absolutely, you can solve it. And as soon as you know what t is, you come back here and solve for this. So what we're gonna do is, um, remember the assumption we have here. Let's put it here. We say that t is equal to 81 to sine squared x. That's our assumption. So let's solve this quadratic equation. Um, we can move this here and say that t squared minus 30t plus 81 is equal to zero. Can this be factored? Yes. If you factor this, I'm gonna spend time explaining how to factor. There's gonna be t minus three. This can be broken down into three and 27 because if you multiply three and 27, you get 81, okay, right? So this is gonna be t minus three times t 
minus 27 is equal to 0. And so we have t equals 3 or t equals 27. So now we can go back to what we claimed at the beginning, saying that 81 raised to the power of sine squared x is equal to 3 or equals 27. Let's take the first one. So we have 81 raised to the power of sine squared x is equal to 3. That's the first option. Well, but I know that I can write 81 as 3 to the fourth. Or, let's look at it this way. What power would you raise 81 to to get 3? It's 1 fourth, right? Okay, just to save time, okay? We know that this has to be 1 fourth. And if you find it hard to deal with, you can take the natural log of both sides or do your exponential equation solution, you get your answer. So I know that this is 1 over 4, okay? So this implies sine squared x is 1 over 4. If you take the square root of both sides, you have sine x will be equal to plus or minus 1 half. If you take the square root of 1 over 4, this is what you get. Now, is it possible for sine x to be equal to 1 half, given the condition we were given? If you looked at the thumbnail, x is supposed to be between 0 and pi. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, I didn't write that condition. Okay, okay, 4, let me write it here. For 0 less than x and x less than pi, is it possible for sine x to be 1 half? Yes in the first quadrant. Is it possible for sine x to be negative one-half? No. So negative one-half is not a good option within this because sine x is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant is positive. Everything is positive. So we have to ignore this and say that sine x equals one-half for this. And what values, what angles will give you uh, one half when you take the sine. So let's just do, we know that this implies that x must be equal to the 30 degree angle, which is pi over 6. It could also be 5 pi over 6. Okay, so with this, we go to the next part. So this is the first these are the first two options we have for the values of x. If you plug this into this original equation, you will get 30. Plug this in or plug this in, you get the same answer. Okay, so let's move on to this. The other option is if t is 27, it's very similar to this, okay? So I'm just gonna do it. So we have 80 or we have 81 to the, um, what do we have, 81 to, sine squared x will be equal to 27. Now, what power would you raise 81 to to get 27? Well, bring this to 3. You take the fourth root of it and then you cube it. So 3 over 4 is what this is going to be. Okay, you can solve it yourself. So we know that sine squared x is 3 over 4. You take the square root of both sides, shows you that sine x is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, right, 3 over 2, plus or minus. But we know again, because of this restriction, our answer has to be positive, okay? So we say that for 0 less than x, less than pi, we know that sine x equals right 3 over 2. And what value of x would that be? Well, there will be two values, one in the first quadrant and one in the Second quadrant, both of them positive. So the first quadrant, this angle has to be the 60 degree angle, which is pi over 3. And when you go to the second quadrant, it is 3 times that, which is going to be, is it 3 times that? No, 2 times that. So it's going to be 2 pi over 3. Am I right? Yes, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Okay, so x equals pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Is it 2 pi over 3? Yes. Yeah, both positive. So, all the possible and possible values of x you can get are pi over 6, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 
and 5 pi over 6. So we say therefore x is equal to pi over 6, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 6. Those are the possible values of x. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.